Superchargers are awesome. Have you ever wanted to install a 671 or a Vortec or a Whipple? When adding a supercharger to your LS, everyone has the same question. What's it worth? Hello everybody, I'm Richard Holder, and as always, welcome to the channel. Once again, we're asking, what's it worth? And this time we're taking a look at superchargers like this one. So what is it worth to put a Vortec on a 4.8 liter, you know, centrifugal blower on a small motor? What about a 671 like this one on an LS? You know, old school, cool stuff. And what about a GM crate motor? What happens when we put a Whipple supercharger on that? We're gonna answer all those questions have you ever been walking or running around your truck and had this happen? You know what? You deserve a cam. Here's what happens when we run the low buck truck cam. Here's what happens when we run the truck plus cam. And here's how the two cams compare. Order now at richardholderperformance.com. Okay, let's jump right in and find out what's it worth. Superchargers, obviously blowers, awesome. Because any form of boost is just going to be better than running the thing NA. We'll start off with our smallest LS motor. This one was a 4.8 liter. It had a stock block, stock crank, stock rods. We did have forged pistons in it. I'd use this motor for lots and lots of stuff. It had a small 7cc dome JE forged piston in it. It had trick flow 205 heads on it. It had a, a relatively small, although in my opinion, still too big for this 4.8 liter. It had a BTR slash LJMS stage one blower cam. And that blower cam was a 610 586 lift, a 223 238 at 50, and 120 degree lobe separation angle. In my opinion, not the best cam for this. We'd actually just run this motor before with a positive displacement Whipple supercharger, and you can see that that video is up. But we had tried that camshaft and, and doing a cam swap on that. That's why it was still in there. So probably not what I would choose if I was optimizing this combination. But we had a dual plane intake manifold, an Elbrock Performer RPM. We ran it with a 750 Holley carburetor. This thing also had an ATI dampener, a seven and a half, seven and a half, seven and a half inch. Had an MSD ignition controller because we were running it carbureted. Had inch and three quarter headers on it. And then we dialed in the timing. This thing ran best with 31 degrees of timing. And this was our NA combination before we would add boost to this thing with a Vortex supercharger. So we ran this thing NA. We ran it out to 7,000 RPM where the power was still climbing, but it made 440 horsepower. Peak torque checked in at 352 foot-pounds of torque. And here's what, and remember this is a dual plane intake manifold. So yes, all of the guys that ask, you can run boost with a dual plane intake because this was a blow through carbureted deal. Here's what happened when we added our supercharger. <coughs> so for this, we added a Vortec T-Trim supercharger. And you can see it added a ton of power as we come to expect from force induction. I'll go ahead and move myself up here to get out of the way. Peak power jumped up to right at 800 horsepower. Peak torque jumped up to 598 foot-pounds. I think we were just over, oh, maybe just over like right at 600 foot-pounds of torque. Like you can see in typical kind of centrifugal blower fashion like this Vortec T-Trim, the boost increased with RPM. We ran it out to about a peak of 15.3 or 4 PSI out here on the top. Again, just like with an NA, the power was still climbing. We would eventually run uh, more RPM and more power with this thing because this, this supercharger would support near 1,000 horsepower, which we did with a slightly bigger motor and a different combination. But it just goes to show you that, hey, when you add boost to these things with a supercharger, you know, a good supercharger like this Vortec TI trim. We also, on this combination, we ran this thing with a good gas in it. We made a combination of pump gas and 91. And then we also ran an air to water intercooler on it. Although you can obviously get away without running an air to water intercooler because this was a blow through. We were blowing through a CSU 850 dedicated blow through carburetor. We had replaced the 750 with this 850, but more so because this was our go-to carburetor for when we would run blow through applications and we were able to adjust it. It had boost reference power valves and stuff and we could dial in the air fuel combination um, on our 4.8 liter. So supercharged 4.8 liter. Now let's check out a stroker. Okay, although we have a lot to choose from, from the hundreds of motors that I've probably tested running blowers on these things, um, I wanted to take a look at, 
you know, shout out to the old school guys. So we put a 671 supercharger, an old school 671 on an LS motor. And this is a very cool combination, but we'll start out with our NA combination. This was a 383 inch stroker, which means that we took either a 4.8 or a 5.3 block. In our case, this started out as a 5.3. You can also use the 4.8 block. But we took a 5.3 iron block and we bored it out to 3905 from 3780. We installed a set of Weissco pistons, K1 rods, a Speedmaster 4-inch stroker crank. And so the combination of the 4-inch stroker crank and the overbore size brought us to 383 inches. We topped this thing with a set of TrickFlow Gen X 225 heads. We installed a crane hydraulic roller cam with 624 lift, 232, 242 duration, and 112 degree lobe separation angle. This thing also had an ATI dampener, engine 7-8 headers on it. We ran stock rockers. And we put uh, Holly injectors and a Holly HP management system on it when we ran it EFI. We ran this thing carbureted first. And we first installed a Victor Jr. intake manifold and a 950 XP Holly. So run in this manner in carbureted trim. We and we obviously optimized the air fuel and timing by jetting and, and using we we're actually controlling the timing using the Holly HP management system. This this 383 combination made 526 horsepower and 496 foot-pounds. Before we put the blower on, we actually ran this thing also fuel-injected with a, you know, a more contemporary EFI intake manifold. In this case, it was a fast LSXR intake manifold. And I want to show you the difference before we get to the boost stuff. And you can see this top one, I'll go ahead and label them, but the one that makes more power everywhere is the fast manifold. So with the fast manifold, we made 548 horsepower. Peak torque was over 500 foot-pounds, 503 foot-pounds of torque. And you could see we, we would expect this on a long run or fast manifold to make more power down low, but it also made a lot more power on the big end. So <laughs> now that we've shown you what the EFI stuff does, let's show you what happens when we add boost. And now we're adding boost with a 671 supercharger. This supercharger, actually the supercharger itself was a 671 and it was a nice one. It came from the guys at the blower shop who do an awesome job. And then we combined that with a kit that the guys from Speedmaster offered, which was a billet lower manifold, basically a, a lower manifold, short runner or no runner manifold that had a, a flat flange on it on the top to mount the blower on, kind of like we've seen on, on most of the stuff on small block Chevys and big block Chevys and stuff. And we had different pulleys and everything on it. We tried a, a variety of different things. With the blower, we ran two 950 XP carburetors. We tried adjusting the timing. We ended up running uh, 23 degrees. We had a 55 tooth crank pulley and a 60 tooth blower pulley which gave us a peak boost of right at seven pounds. So the peak boost was 7.1 pounds or so. And run in this manner with our supercharged 383. We made over 750 horsepower, 753 horsepower. Peak torque checked in at 625 foot pounds. And you could see it just, you know, it's, it did bl what blowers do. First of all, it makes a heck of a visual statement with a big blower sticking out of the hood, especially an old school 671 on an LS. And it also makes a lot of power. I mean, we're talking about 750 horsepower at like seven pounds of boost. So you really can't argue with that. Now let's take a look at our final blower combo. Okay, guys, our final test is run on the B15 LSX crate motor from the guys at Gander Chevrolet. It's a GM performance piece. Basically, it's kind of their boost ready you know, crate motor. And so it is a 376 inch, you know, LS3 kind of base deal. It has LS3 heads on it. It has, it originally came with either an LSA or an LS9 camshaft, but we had since replaced that. We ran a Whipple, a four liter Whipple on this thing. We put inch and seven eighths headers on it. We did an interesting test. So we compared uh, what I would consider a pretty good high performance, like NA camshaft. And then we installed a BTR kind of dedicated blower camshaft. And then we did what everybody does is we turned the boost up. So we started out on our Whipple supercharger. We had 150 pound injectors. We had a Holly HP management system. So we're running this thing. And this is pretty cool because it was basically just the, the crate motor. Now, a couple uh, of recommendations on that crate motor on that B15. 
I recommend changing the springs, which we had to do on this because it comes with factory LS3 springs. So we put BTR dual springs on it. If you're going to be putting a better camshaft in, which you could make a lot more power with other camshafts besides the one that that crate motor comes with. If you want a nice idle and all that stuff, that factory camshaft works well. But if you want to make power, any of these aftermarket cams are going to make much more power. So a spring upgrade was necessary. We did that. We started out with a seven and a half inch ATI damper and so therefore pulley size and then for the blower we put a 4.75 inch blower pulley on our four liter whipple we had a 105 millimeter uh, throttle body i think feeding the whipple so we ran this thing and this thing produced a peak of just under 16 pounds 15.8 15.9 pounds with our first camshaft and that first camshaft was a comp but one that i've used in a lot of stuff it was a 617, 624 lift, a 231, 247 degree duration split at 113 degree lobe separation angle. This was our quote unquote NA camshaft. And so what we did was then we replaced this with the BTR camshaft. And you can see we picked up quite a bit of power. We we're up to 880 horsepower from 854 horsepower. Uh, interesting also that the bigger Brian Tooley cam, we'll go ahead and take a look at the size of the camshaft on that one that one was bigger it was a 617 624 lift so share the same lift it's 239 258 degree duration and 119 degree lobe separation angle so more duration and a wider lsa on the bigger blower cam and it made more power out at the top kind of what we would expect given those changes and also made slightly less power down below 4800 rpm so we were up to 880 horsepower and our, as you can see at 66 or 6700 our power curve is still rising so we could have continued to rev this thing out but we did what everybody else does instead of doing that what we did was just change the blower pulley and run more boost um the boost actually came actually went up slightly with the btr camshaft so it's 15.8 or 9 with the comp cam and then 16.4 with the btr camshaft we need we made no change in pulley size so the change in boost was purely a function of the camshaft and so what we did was we definitely changed the boost <laughs> we went to a four inch blower pulley where that pushed peak boost up to about 23 pounds and we are up near a thousand horsepower 990 horsepower Peak torque checked in at 826 foot-pounds. So you can see there's a lot of important things. Adding boost, great. Adding more boost, also great. But also having the right cam chef when you add the boost. I'm Richard Holder. Please make sure to like, share, subscribe, ring the bell. Do all that stuff, and I'll keep testing.